you for reading this video. I apologize. I am in the weirdest mood right now, so I figured that I should film this video because my reactions are probably going to be super, super high up than what they normally would be. So, we're going with it. <sighs> I know I get hung up on things that I should not be hung up on, but just, I can't. Sips tea. Even though this is coffee, that's okay. <sighs> I'm sure you're going to be able to tell that I have a lot of anger in my little tiny body for my book pet peeves, so I'm warning you in advance. I just, I get very passionate about my, my dislike for things in books, so I'm sorry. <laughs> It's Jay, and today I am going to be discussing some of my personal book pet peeves. You know these things that when you're reading a book, it just makes you be like, No! That is what we're discussing today. These are in no particular order, they're just kind of what I came up with like five minutes before I filmed this video. So without further ado, let us get started. <sighs> Number one, my biggest book pet peeve. If you guys have been watching, my channel for a while. You should know this because anytime it happens, I always mention it. Insta love. I'm talking the like, girl sees boy. Boy sees girl. Oh my god, Mary me, I love you so much. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, you're so hot. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, my life is like complete because you're in it now. It's like, girl, it's been five seconds. Like, you need to, you need to, you're up here? You need to bring it down here. You just, you see the level difference? You just bring it down. You don't love each other. You don't. Number two is repetition in books. For example, I recently just read Monument 14 by Emmy LeBourne, and at one point during the first chapter, I'm pretty sure, we're told that the bus is on its side six times. Six times! Okay, do I really need to know that the bus is on its side for six times? No, I don't. At one point, it literally has in brackets, remember, the bus is on its side. It's like, okay, cool, the bus is on its side. Thank you. I understand. I'm not stupid. This is getting repetitive, Jan. You're your own pet peeve. Number three, the use of the R word in books. I don't know if everybody knows what I'm talking about when I say the R word, but it is a negative word that people use to describe people with mental disabilities or physical disabilities. Get where I'm going? There are so many other words that you could use to describe a person, so why are you using that word? It's 2016. Let's move on from the use of this word. Please, I beg you, like it literally makes me cringe when people say it. I hate the word. Number four is when a character says, I'm not like other girls. Like, like yes, you are like other girls. You are literally like every other girl in the entire world. It's just such a cliche line. Like, come up with something else, authors, please. Number five is when I'm reading a book, I'm in public, or I'm at home, I'm just reading, okay? So here I am reading. And then somebody comes up to you and they're like, hey, how you doing? And I'm just like, I'm good, how are you? And then they're like, I'm great. And I'm just like, uh-huh. And then they just keep talking at you and they're like, blah, 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 And it's like, I'm reading? And like, if you're like this in my ear, I don't know what I'm reading. So can you stop being like this in my ear? Thank you, mom. I'm looking at you. Hey, hey mom, yeah, you do this. Number six is movie adaptations of books that literally change the whole storyline. It's like, why are you even making this movie saying that it's this book? Because you literally changed the entire plot. Like, I don't... What? What? For example, Allegiant by Veronica Roth. That movie, like, are we on Mars? I don't understand how this has anything to do with how the book played out. You literally changed the entire story. I don't understand. But this could also kind of be a positive because, for example, Nerve by Jeanne Ryan. I really liked the movie adaptation. I thought it was way better than the book. But literally the only thing that was similar to the book were the names of the characters and the whole concept of nerve. Everything else, like the dares and all that stuff, was completely different. Number seven is when there are spelling errors in books. Okay, like if it's an arc, this is understandable, it's not the finished copy, but if you're reading a finished copy and there's multiple spelling errors, it's like... How? Like, do you not have an editor? This is their job to literally fix the spelling errors and whatever other errors there are in the book? Like, what? It... <laughs> Just do your job. I'll be reading, and I'm just like, uh, you spelled there wrong. Okay, and like, and then it bothers me for the next like eight chapters of the book, and all I'm thinking about is you spelled that wrong. Like, uh. number eight is one of my personal preferences. So like, it's probably not a pet peeve for a lot of other people. But 
when a book has tiny, tiny little font, I just, I don't want to read the book. Because it's just so small. Like, can we just, can we just expand? Like, why are we writing in size 7 times New Roman font? Can we, can we upgrade to a 12 times New Roman font, please, so I can actually see? Like, I need a magnifying glass to read a book? That's a no for me. It's just a no. Pet peeve number nine is when a book series just keeps going. We're on book 20 now. Like, why? For example, the selection series by Kira Cass. Book four, you know, it was a cute concept. I liked how we got to see into the daughter's life. But book five, like, why, why were you there? It literally could have just been combined into book four and we could have been done. There was just no point to book five, so why why did it happen? You wanna know why? Because it's a money grab and you just you need to keep making money as an author. I understand that, but it gets to the point where it's like, okay, we get it. Move on to something else. Another example, the House of Night series by PC Cast. We're on like book twelve, I think. I believe the series is over, but after like book six, I was like, okay, I think we need to move on now. And finally, my tenth book pet peeve is when I'm able to call the ending of a book. I'm reading the like first chapter of a book and I'm like, okay, this is what's gonna happen. And then it happens, I get so annoyed because I just spent all that time reading this book to know what was gonna happen. It just irks me. I just can't. For example, John Corey Whaley's Where Things Come Back. I think I was about a quarter of the way through the book and I was like, this is what's gonna happen. And then I got to the end of the book, that's what happened. I was like, <sighs> there was so much potential and it just fell short for me which is usually what happens if I'm able to call the end of a book. All right guys so that was my 10 pet peeves when it comes to books. If you guys are interested in knowing more of my pet peeves let me know down below. I could just keep going for years honestly. So if you're interested let me know and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!